Thank you, Frederick. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, yeah, we are going to talk a bit about um, Wikidata and, uh, and OpenStreetMap and how we can use that in our applications. Um, why do we care about that? Um, when we think about applications, um, the first thing that for most of us probably comes to mind um, is code. Um, but that's by far not enough to, to actually make the applications uh, work and, and useful, right? Um, um, a free media player only solves half of the problem as long as the audio and video files I want to play are stuck in some proprietary streaming service. Um, a free software email client only solves part of the problem as long as the emails are hosted at, uh, at Google. And a free software spell checker only solves half of the problem as long as the dictionary for my language isn't freely available. Right, and the, the last bit is an example for uh, data we need for our applications to, to, functions prop, uh, to function properly. Um, and we actually have um, a number of, uh, of examples in KDE where, uh, where applications rely on, on data. Um, one of the obvious things to come to mind is probably Marble, um, which is basically just data, um, but there's a lot of cases where this is um, a lot more subtle. Um, the uh, metadata retrieval in, uh, in media players come to mind. Um, there is a number of places that do some form of coordinate to time zone or coordinate to country or region mapping uh, for, for image viewers and for, for setting up the clock and, and stuff like that. And then, of course, there is the uh, the crazy stuff in uh, in things like the itinerary, and that's of course the reason why I looked into that entire topic. Uh, and if you haven't seen that, there we do stuff like checking if the power plug between your home country and the travel destination country are compatible, or if you have to bring a um, a converter and detect airport and stations mentioned in a, in a travel document. So of course, that is, is heavily relying on, on data as well. And there's probably many, many more uh, examples all over KDE where, where, where this is the case. Um, so where did, do we get that data from? Um, fortunately, there has been somewhat of a um, positive change in the, in the last 10 years or so with open data becoming a thing in the same way as um, free software became a thing in the decade before that. Um, and that results in, in organizations like government agencies or um, even bigger companies uh, publishing uh, relevant data sets. Um, that, however, is often in in a form that is uh, fairly disconnected from each other, that doesn't use some kind of standard identifier. So merging those individual, individual data sets is uh, uh, quite some, some work and, and non-trivial. Um, the formats are often fairly primitive, like CSV or spreadsheets. Um, they use a varying amount of licenses. Um, and often this data is de facto read-only. Um, I mean, you find a typo in there, and then there's usually no process to get back to the government agency where this came from to tell them, here's the, the patch, please apply that. And then they need some kind of internal process to propagate that and eventually release a new data set, um, which then results in you having to do all kinds of workarounds in, in your code for that. Um, Fortunately, there is a, is a much better way um, to work with this, um, and that's the two giant databases maintained by the Wikidata and by the OpenStreetMap uh, communities. Um, they basically aggregate um, an enormous amount of data from, from various different sources um, provided from somebody else or obtained themselves. Um, and collect that in, in unified databases with a unified format, unified interface, unified license, um, and in a way that it is really easy um, to edit that and to change that. Um, so 
we find a few typos in there, we fix that upstream, and right? that's the easiest way for us to deal with that problem, and it benefits for everyone else as well. Um, for itinerary, we were missing some special French and Belgium station identifiers in, in Wikidata, so we just edit them upstream. That avoids a whole lot of complication in our code, and that's, that's possible if you use those systems. Um, so a very brief overview on what's actually in, in Wikidata and, and OpenStreetMap. And I'm sorry, Lydia, if I'm butchering your work here um, a bit. Uh, I had to simplify this enough to squeeze it on two slides. Um, so Wikidata aims at um, basically being the machine-readable form of, of Wikipedia. So that means um, uh, a very, very broad scope. So any factual statement is, is basically in scope there. And that so far has resulted in um, uh, 8 billion statements, about uh, 100 million objects and counting. So this is uh, very rapidly growing. Um, and that is accompanied by another 60 million media assets, so images, um, logos, that kind of stuff. Um, technically, um, what this database contains um, are subject, predicate, object triples. So if you are old enough that you have been around in the KDE 4 era, you might remember some of this from Nepomuk. Uh, and in, indeed, you'll, you'll find uh, a number of similarities in here. Um, so the, the subject is, um, that's items, um, which is basically just a numeric identifier prefix with a capital Q. Um, then the predicate, that can be uh, any of about 9,000 different properties, uh, again, represented by a numerical identifier and prefix by a capital P. Um, and that can be anything from very widely used and very generic things like instance of or creation time to something very niche and very specific like power plug type. Um, and the object that can be then um, primitive types like strings, um, numbers, dates, or references to media assets or other items. Um, and those statements can be. Uh, qualified, um, so we can specify, for example, in which time frame they were valid. Um, so we can also model how things change over time. And then in Wikidata, speak as an example, something like uh, Q1431, P31, Q2989352 obviously means KDE is a free software community. Um, and then similar in, in OpenStreetMap, um, very similar size for the for that database, um, about six billion points in there, um, and seven hundred million lines and polygons um, of geometry that represents anything on Earth. Um, the license for OSM is uh, we need to pay a tiny bit more attention to than for for Wikidata's uh, CC zero. Um, ODBL has uh, chair-like and attribution requirements. Um, that is for the well, somewhat comparable to the, the GPL we use in code, so um, easy for us to comply with in, in a free software world, uh, but we actually have to um, take care of that. And then what's um, technically in, in here is um, uh, we basic element types, um, uh, nodes, ways, and relations. Um, nodes are points, so that's basically just a geographic coordinate and a 100 nano degree resolution. Uh, depending on your latitude, that is in the, in the centimeter range. Um, so you can even model like room scale objects uh, in, in here. Um, ways are then uh, ordered sequences of nodes. Um, so that's what's uh, uh, used to build lines or, or simple polygons. And relations, um, that is used both for semantic groupings, like those five buildings uh, belong to a campus, um, and uh, for modeling complex polygons. Um, so polygons that have holes in them and that you can't represent by a single way anymore. 
And then the part where this gets really interesting, each of those elements can be annotated by a large set of, um, of key value pairs. Uh, and that's what's actually adding the, the meaning to that geometry data. Um, because anything in here is um, described on a semantic level. So for a line, you won't find an annotation telling you render this 10 pixel wide in a black and white dash pattern on the map. But it will tell you instead, this is a railway track, right? And then any visual display decides how, how that is rendered. That's not in the data. And the data in here goes far uh, beyond what, uh, what you would usually see visualized on a map. So imagine you're building a, like a digital assistant, and you have a query like, find me a pizza place within a 500 meter range from, from where I am right now. Um, that I can enter uh, with a wheelchair that um, offers uh, vegan options where I can pay with one of my credit cards and which is near to a parking spot where I can charge the elect my electrical car with a type two connector. Right? The data to answer that is all in here. So it's, it's incredibly detailed um, um, and can be used way beyond just rendering a map. And if any of those two databases aren't good enough on their own. Um, they offer cross-referencing uh, between OSM elements and Wikidata items uh, in both directions. OK, so how can we make use of that then in, in our applications? Um, and there's basically two approaches to this. Uh, one is. Um, bundling the data we need with the application for, for offline use. And the other one is um, accessing some, some kind of online API. Um, so for the bundling, um, that works uh, if you have a reasonable amount uh, uh, of data and data that is fairly static. So that doesn't change with a high probability within a, within a release cycle. Um, and that actually applies to a surprising amount of, um, of use cases. Um, because since you're doing some offline preparation as a developer for the data you ship, uh, you can actually put quite some, some effort into this um, to very efficiently pack it in a way that it needs very, very little space and can still be uh, very efficiently accessed at runtime. Um, so there's a lot you can squeeze in a few hundred kilobytes if you're not using XML or JSON. Um, and then of course, there, there remains the question on where do you get the data from as the, as the developer? Uh, and for that, um, there's the, the online query APIs that we'll see in a second. Um, there is, uh, in some cases, derivative databases. So for example, um, there's the uh, time zone shape file. That's a just 120 megabyte in size extract with the exact vector borders for the time zones. Um, that is generated from the full uh, OSM data set. Um, but it, it's, of course, a lot more efficient if you work with, uh, with the small subset, if you find one that matches your use case. And otherwise, there's of course always the case to the, the, the possibility to work with the, the full data sets. Um, I mean, 60 gigabytes of download is uh, is hard, but that's still still manageable um, if you don't have another option. Um, then for the online access, um, gener uh, generally there is two different types of APIs that you find in in both Wikidata and OpenStreetMap. Um, one is a, a simple single item access API. Um, that usually has a, a, a very fast response time in, in a millisecond. So Wikidata, for example, uses that to power its, uh, its auto completion. Uh, so that scales very well, but it's, um, uh, has a somewhat limited way of, of querying this. And for the, um, the second option starts the, the complex query services uh, using query languages like Sparkle, again, something you might remember from, uh, from Nepomuk, uh, or Overpass QL for, um, uh, for OpenStreetMap. Um, 
that little example I have here uh, lists all the members of the KDE community uh, as known by Wikidata. Um, and those, uh, those services come very, with uh, very nice interactive uh, tools uh, to work with. And that already shows that they are much more focused on um, uh, research and experiments and obtaining data for offline processing rather than for use from applications. Um, and that's emphasized by the fact that if you're lucky, the response comes in within seconds, uh, but even waiting minutes isn't unheard of. So definitely not something to use from within an application, uh, but very useful to you as a developer. Um, and then there is a number of um, kind of third party services um, that are built on top of um, the Wikidata or OpenStreetMap data sets um, that might be usable for, for specific purposes. Um, one of them is actually one that, that KDE hosts itself, um, and that's uh, on Maps KDE Org, the um, um, back end for the vector maps in Marble. And we are currently working on uh, updating that um, to ensure it has uh, worldwide coverage and um, is typically uh, not lagging behind the upstream data by more than 24 hours. Um, and what this offers us is a very efficient way to retrieve uh, basically raw um, OpenStreetMap data for a very small region, so a range of a few hundred meters, for example. Uh, and if you look at an area of that size, uh, the, the full raw data is uh, just a few kilobytes usually. Um, so this gives us a very flexible and powerful mechanism uh, for any kind of use case um, that you might come up with, as long as it has a, a very localized um, need of accessing data. Um, and as plenty of other services um, worth mentioning, um, like the um, the routing or geocoding services um, uh, offered around uh, OpenStreetMap, for example. Um, when we use online access from within the application, um, there's a few things to consider. Uh, privacy is uh, one of the, uh, the obvious issues um, because it becomes very, very easy here to leak high resolution coordinates. So possibly the location where the user is right now or where the user lives, as well as specific interests or activities. Um, if you remember the, um, the query example from earlier uh, for the digital assistant, right? If you send that as is to the server, you leak the exact position where I live, as well as the very specific interest and specific constraints I have on what I'm searching for. If you, on the other hand, would run this against uh, something like the Maps KDE Org interface, that already reduces the uh, coordinate resolution to a few hundred meters. And it doesn't leak anything about what I'm actually looking for because it just gives me the entire data set. Um, if that's good enough from a privacy point of view, I guess depends on what alternatives you have. Right? So the offline approach will always uh, win against that, but that's not always feasible, obviously. Um, and then if you use somebody else's uh, online access or online APIs, uh, check the, the guidelines and rules for that, um, because some of this can cause quite some load on somebody else's server. Um, Somebody has to pay for that, right? The Wikidata and an OpenStreetMap are just uh, communities like, like us as well. Um, so uh, it's always uh, important to also keep in mind the, the cost on that side. Um, right, if you want to do um, anything like that in your application, um, I listed a few examples here um, in just covering code that I touched recently, there's, there's probably more, um, like uh, Marble comes to mind, uh, where some of this that I, some of the things I mentioned um, are actually used or uh, are done in some way. Uh, so that might give you some examples or inspiration on, on how this could be approached. So there's um, 
offline and online access for uh, for those uh, those kinds of uh, data in there and um, various forms of more or less elaborate uh, local preprocessing. And um, yeah, with that, um, we are already coming to an end. Um, so I, I hope that gave you some ideas on, on what's possible and um, uh, a bit of an overview on, on how we can approach using OpenStreetMap and Wikidata um, for, for our applications. Um, and I also have a few questions uh, where I'd be interested in, in feedback. Um, uh, for one, do you think it makes sense um, if we extract some of those building blocks um, or collect some of the building blocks for, for working with this kind of data in, say, a separate library or framework? And then do you have um, database features um, that would make sense in, in frameworks. And I have the suspicion that some of the uh, coordinate-based uh, lookup features um, to get time zones or countries or so on um, might be of, uh, of a broader interest there. So um, that would be something I would be interested in, in discussing this week, for example. And yeah, I think we, we have a few minutes for questions. Yeah. Thank you so much for your talk. It's so fun to see Volker dive deeper and deeper into uh, data and uh, itinerary and transport. We do have currently two questions. Uh, so uh, the first one is, is there data with shop opening times? Uh, yes, I, I actually uh, missed that in my, my query example. Um, that is, of course, in the OpenStreetMap data. And that again is probably a topic uh, for an entire talk and an um, entire framework uh, because modeling opening times while considering local public holidays and various different patterns and seasonal things that's all done they have all of that in there it's an, a very very detailed uh, comprehensive specification on on the format writing a, an inter parser and interpreter for that um, is something we still need to do uh, I expect that to be similar in complexity, like the ICAO uh, recurrent handling. Um, but yes, that, that's there, and it's extremely powerful uh, in what you can model with it. Wow. OK, second question. Are you reusing data from Noma, Nomantim? No, Nominatim. Um, Sorry for address lookup. You probably know what that yeah, is. I have no idea. Yeah, that's the. Um, um, the geocoder or reverse geocoder, I always mix up which one is reverse. Um, uh, that is one of the, the, the third party services that come to mind for, for specific use cases with, uh, uh, with geographic data, so for, for geocoding. Um, we are currently not doing geocoding um, in in itinerary yet, uh, but we will need that uh, at some point. Um, uh, if you get a hotel reservation with just the address, right? We need to know where that actually is in order to plan a way to get there, to know, and to complete all the missing bits on which country is this in, which time zone is this in, and so on. Uh, so that that is important to have. I am not sure it's possible to do that offline, uh, seeing that this was added to the question. Um, I suspect the database behind that to be uh, in the multi-gigabyte range. So that is uh, not something you want to deploy on a mobile phone. Um, that, is, that is typically something that is only realistically solvable by an, an online service, I think. All right. Yeah, great discussion in the chat. How do I find the way from my work desk to my bed and stuff like that? Uh, not sure if yeah, Kate... that... are you solving that? Um, <laughs> we are working on that, not necessarily for, for the bed to desk scenario, but um, I mean, one of the reasons why I'm finding myself digging deeper and deeper into OpenStreetMap is um, we are looking into indoor maps for big train stations and airports. 
and I'm doing sort of navigation in there. So what is the most efficient way to switch from between your trains if, if you're in a hurry in stations like uh, Berlin Hauptbahnhof where you have like eight floors um, and only one working elevator and right, so there's, uh, but ultimately, if you can model that in an open street map and work with it, if you add your your bedroom and your uh, your office to the open street map data, <laughs> it should work there as well. So nice. Um, All right, then I guess we are out of official questions there. Uh, one question from my side: accessibility. I uh, still care about that. Uh, wheelchair accessible data, blind uh, navigation lanes, and so on. I guess there's a lot of data for that as well. There is a. Um, I haven't. I've only scratched the surface for that, but there is a um, a huge amount of text on on that subject for wheelchair access. There is a a complete model for uh, for for toilets and restrooms. Um, there's yeah, the, uh, tactile paving and tactile. Uh, signs uh, and information about that, um, and probably more that I don't uh, that I haven't found yet or don't even understand. Um, so there's there seems to be a, a large sub community with an accessibility interest um, involved there. Yeah, um, there's uh, things like Wheelmap that is based on top of OSM, mm -hmm. and they they also have APIs for. Um, the life status of elevators and and that kind of stuff. So there's there's people looking specifically at at those topics, and of course it yeah. would be interesting for us to to leverage that as well. 